Christ! It's about time someone sent in the cavalry. I've been hiding here for a week. This ain't a rescue mission, so watch your mouth. I'm here to pick up some documents for Assistant Secretary Harrow. Documents? I don't know anything about any documents. Oh, uh, these documents? You must be the accountant. Uh, Jonathan Q. Biddle, at your service. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Harrow promised me immediate backup, as long as I kept this safe. Harrow's written you off, Biddle. Sent me for the case, not you. All I know is that DC wants that portfolio seized. DC? What an asshole. Harrow isn't trying to leverage this property for the government, you ate. He wants it for himself. He wrote me into this scheme for a cut of the profits, and now he's hung me out to dry. That asshole. How big a cut? 10%. Hope it was worth all those soldiers' lives, you greedy little pissworm. I'll take that. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. What about me? How'll I get home? Walk. Turning the tides, my ass. <clears throat> More like lining your own pockets, you slimy shit. What the hell are you? Ah, Biddle. Oopsie daisy. You sent two dozen National Guardsmen to their deaths for a paycheck. When the president gets wind of this, you're a dead man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's just that the way the veins in your forehead are throbbing, it's so <laughs> comical. Mr. Assistant Secretary, these accusations sound serious, and... First of all, it's Mr. Secretary now, as in Secretary of War, as in the fucking right hand of God. Secondly, do you think the President of these United States is gonna give a royal fuck about the pissant accusations of a podunk... <laughs> Go ahead, Reggie, do it. Give me a reason to throw your cowpoke ass in a new gate and flends your father's legacy to the bone. The Harrow Institute has a much better ring to it, don't you think? Mr. Secretary, maybe it would be for the best if you... Maybe it would be best if you stopped interrupting me, you groveling mule! You want to make yourself useful? Get to the kitchen and fetch me a cup of coffee! Now fuck off and find some vampires to kill. That's much more your speed. You want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. But how did you manage to finish longevity? I'm surprised. Virgil and I were just having the most invigorating discussion. I was telling Director Rentier about my ideas for upgrading the gauntlet. Huh. I must say it's refreshing to see young blood like Mr. Olney's coursing through Calico. We'll need his vital spirit if we're to rebuild the Institute's power and vigor. Well done, son. I think we may have given him a few too many vaults. I'm glad to see you're in good shape, but uh, we've got a situation. In order to keep your condition quiet, Amelia told Harrow you died. He's pulled rank and is sending us out on money grubbing errands while Felicity's building her army. Harrow's head knows what's right, but his heart is tainted by lust for power and money. Uh, it's gonna get worse now that he got promoted. One wrong move and we're dead in the water. But one right move and you could catch her and end this war on the subject of moving. You know what? Maybe let's wait for the dog to give the all clear before we start unbinding anyone. Oh, Edgar. Harrow's not an idiot. Without the Institute, this country would turn into a blood feast. Now, you tell me, son. What's more important? His approval or ending this war before it started? What did you see while Felicity was in your head? Death. Death. Horrible monsters appearing out of nowhere. Fire, smoke, everything. And, and box cars. Scores of them. Filled with blood. 
That's how she's transporting the leeches now? By train? That's not good, sirs. Dickinson is a major cattle railway hub. The trains run in all directions. If there's an outbreak, we won't be able to contain it. <laughs>